Hey guys, this is Powerful Thought Daily. <clears throat> I'm Jay Hendricks. Today I wanted to talk about uh, the dangers of Leo, Leo Gura of Actualize.org. So <clears throat> I've been watching his movies or his videos for, I don't know, about a year or so. And so I knew of him of his videos before his enlightenment video and what has since happened after. For those of you who don't know, he posted a video, I don't know, a few months ago where he had went to a meditation retreat and how he had been trying to meditate, trying to meditate, and he was getting really, really bored. And so then he took um, psychedelics. And he had this huge awakening where he realized that he is God. And all of his teachings thereafter have been radically different. Well, just much more radical than before. Uh, Actualize.org used to practically help people to um, improve their lives, improve their psychology, kind of meld mysticism and wisdom together. And all of his videos, I haven't seen all of his videos since his awakening, but I'll go look at them a few times. And I got to say, he has things very backwards in a lot of things. Um, I think he's causing a lot of harm to psychology, to a lot of people's minds. And he's misinterpreted enlightenment quite a bit. So this is what uh, I have found with psychedelics is that if you if you're on an, an enlightenment path and you are prematurely pushed into a high consciousness state, you will misinterpret what you experience, and that's exactly what happened with Leo. He. So what happens when you take psychedelics, for those of you who haven't, I have, I'll admit it. What happens is that, especially prematurely, if, if you haven't transcended yourself enough, you will go into that higher state of consciousness projecting yourself onto everything. And you will think that you are everything. And that... Everything, so the whole non-duality idea, you'll think everything equals everything. Good is evil. Illusion is reality. And that is incredibly dangerous because it's like what Leo says. You come to the conclusion that all of this is the universe masturbating with itself. I think in his own words, he called it. The universe is God's masturbatorium, and that everyone around you is just you. And so, I mean, what's more disappointing and disheartening than calling your mom and realizing you're alone because your mom is you? That's not really your mom. It's just an image, an illusion that was created to comfort you. What this leads to is complete nihilism and meaninglessness because there is absolutely no point to existence if everything is you. There's absolutely no point. So... <clears throat> I think what his line of reasoning and his ideas lead to is complete depression, complete existential crisis, complete nihilism, moral relativism, uh, nothing matters. Uh, it's just you masturbating. That's it. And the, the classic idea of the devil is just that. He has prematurely pushed his consciousness into higher states of consciousness, confused and misinterpreted it, 
and now thinks that he is everything. That is the idea of Lucifer in the in the brief passages of the Bible. He makes himself greater than God. He is God. He overthrows God. And it is just it is the dangers of enlightenment. If you push yourself too hard, too fast, you will become depressed and lonely and nihilistic. And I've noticed a bunch of people in his comments. I've commented on his videos and he's replied back. And I feel like I completely explain my side and how I think he's wrong. But all he does is simply wave it off and say, no, this equals that. No, illusion is reality. No, yourself is the devil. No, the devil is God. Nothing means anything. And he constantly contradicts himself and he never is able to explain anything, and he always backs himself into a logical corner over and over and over. I'm not going to go in detail all the times he's done this, but you can go look for yourself in the videos. His line of reasoning never makes sense, and it never leads anywhere. He's lost in this web of meaningless insanity. So... <clears throat> What is truly the case is that we, as individuals, are capable of expanding our consciousness to see everything, to see all that there is to see. And we have the capacity, that's one side, so we're able to see and perceive all things. We are also able to see and perceive one thing, one specific thing. That's our capacity. He's confusing that capacity, his actual perception, with who he actually is. He's equating perception with his being, with who his individual. So <clears throat> I'm here to say that I broke it down a lot better for, but for him and how his ideas are flawed in the comments. Hopefully I can think specifically of what I said. That's a problem. But, um... Okay, so yes, the universe is completely unified, and it works in perfect balance, even though it seems to not be in balance sometimes. That's the illusion of the universe, is that it can appear to be out of balance. It can appear to, you know, from one angle, it is evil. Something could be very evil, like... Hitler or communist Russia. But if you look at it from another angle, maybe from a more progressed angle, a higher consciousness, you can see that those evil acts did, in fact, serve a purpose. And it expressed the will of humanity to break through these old forms of thinking and governing and being. So it was a time of transition, and evil is always there to appear when great changes are taking place, and it's always there to challenge anything that's progressing. So Leo's ideas are a huge wall. It stops all progression. It takes away all meaning. It takes away any reason to continue. It makes you think, why even do anything then? If it's all up to me, why don't I just forget everything? Why don't I just forget I exist? Why don't I just become a son of perdition and go to outer darkness and forget all things? Why would suffering be worth it? Why would anything have a purpose? You know, without a purpose, it's just, it's mind boggling. So if you take the word purpose, um, you can actually do this with many words. If you break down their meanings, you can get a greater picture of what they actually mean. So purpose P-U-R, per, P-O-S-E. So, per is pure. 
P-O-S-E is derivative of poise. So pure poise. The purpose right now that we can understand that can actually be said by language is to gain a pure perception, a pure poise of reality. So the, the problem with Leo's thinking is that he equates illusion with reality. So I, I just don't even know where to go with that. Um, What we are, we are all gods. We are not all God. Duh. We're not one being of God. We are all a God, potentially. And like I said, we have the capacity to see one thing and all things. And how this is possible is that we used to be completely one with God, the creator. The being, the individual that started this batch of people, our father. We're his sons and daughters, let's say. That's where that idea came from. That's why we're made in his image. He is like us. We are one with him. We are one and the same, or we are like him. Okay, so we were with God. And if you're living with God, it's ultimate bliss. At least that's what we we're told. Uh, Godhood is bliss. We don't understand why. We don't understand what. But that's the far off goal that we're striving for. So we are with God in perfect bliss. None of us had a will of our own because if you're in perfect bliss, you're going to do exactly what God wants to do all the time. Um, if he's giving you perfect bliss all the time, you'll never trespass that. No, no one's will is strong enough to do that. Okay? So what happened was, we decided, or he, you know, the myth of the Garden of Eden, or the story, or the whatever you want to call it. The Garden of Eden story is a symbolic representation of what happened. Because Adam and Eve were in a state of innocence, and they didn't have a will of their own. They didn't know good from evil. They didn't know anything different than the presence of God. In fact, they didn't even know it was bliss because they didn't know what evil or sorrow or suffering was. Okay? So we're all with God, this perfect parent, and, you know, we do everything he says. He gives us a choice. This was the, the changing, the thing that changed everything. He gave us a choice instead of doing everything that he was doing and following him all the time. And this is all symbolic, okay? I don't know. It's not like we were all people and he's a person. I don't know. Anyway, it could be that, but who knows? So we're all with him. He gives us a choice. Um, eternal life and uh, the tree of life, which is what we were doing. That was the world we were in. Eternal life and bliss. But this tree, the knowledge of good and evil, do not take that, the fruit of that tree. Do not do that or you will for surely die. Now what happened was, is we're all with God, symbolically speaking, whatever, and we're given this choice and the masculine Adam says, I'm just going to keep doing what God says. The feminine and masculinity is um, symbolized by order and femininity is um, symbolized by chaos in the yin-yang symbol. Femininity um, 
chose to know good and evil. And why that is, I don't know. Perhaps Lucifer was playing a part in a play. Perhaps, you know, the snake was playing a part in a play. And this was the first time that we knew we had a choice. This is the first time God is saying, don't do this. Every other time he was just living and we were doing exactly what he was doing. We didn't have a will of our own. So he says, I'm living here. We're in bliss, but don't do this. And what's the first thing we do is for some reason we do that. And what happens is, is for sure we die. And what happened is we're with him and we became completely separated from him. Our consciousness. So think of this. Our consciousness is one with him all the time. We have no will of our own. Now we are completely separated from him like a sphere. You know how a sphere cuts off everything around it? And it, now it's its own thing. We were completely cut off from the consciousness of God. And we forgot we existed. Because everything we were relied upon God, the Father. So we became completely separated. We um, completely forgot we existed. And this universe is what is being created by us in the process of us remembering that we exist. So, this is kind of a deep, mind-blowing thought, but we were all once Adams. There's a reason Adam and Eve, his name's Adam. It's an interesting tie-in, but... We were all just simple atoms, you know, trillions of years ago, billions of years ago. I don't know how long they're saying the universe is. We all became separate individual atoms. And atoms are atoms, like the atoms of a rock or a mineral are atoms. And they are the same thing as us, but they are reflecting their consciousness. How we see them, we see them in the state of their consciousness. And they're not very conscious, so they appear as minerals. Through the eons of time, through evolution, life eventually forms. And yes, we were once animals. We were once, you know, bacteria, fishes, animals, apes, and now this. And our bodies change and morph according to our state of consciousness. In evolution, evolution is driven by consciousness and contact with the environment. It's not done by nature. It's not formed by this powerful force of nature. It's strictly the degree of consciousness that that entity has, and then that's the form they take. So my body is made up of many, many atoms, and me, an atom at the center of my head, where I reside, am governing all of these atoms as I have come into contact with them, as I have negotiated, and it's like a huge kingdom. I am the God of this universe, this body. That's where Leo gets it confused. He thinks he is the whole universe, but no, he is only this universe. Your body is a universe that you are the God of. My body is the universe I am the God of. And as we increase our consciousness and make greater contact with more subtle vibrations and things that are beyond our perception right now, but as we continue to refine that perception and get, and we become aware of emotions, you know, we become aware of ourself that we actually exist. That's what distinguishes us from 
almost all animals is we know that we exist. We're the only beings, animals, or whatever you want to call us, that know that we will die. So we have learned a lot more lessons than apes and elephants and dolphins. And as we continue in this process, we be humans are aware of emotions. We're aware of ourselves. We're aware of our thoughts. We're aware of ideas. All these things are real things that we can't quite see, yet they're there. They're real. And as we increase in our consciousness, our bodies change. And that's what would be called like a kundalini awakening. That would be when the composition of your body changes and you become resurrected. That's that idea. And at some point you can reach a stage where you are immortal because you see that there is no need to die. The only reason we die is because we think, we, we are not aware that we are truly immortal yet, but we actually, in fact, are. We're in the process of remembering that we are gods. And the whole point of this is to gain a will of our own. That's why free will is so important. We had to be cut off from God completely. We had to relearn how to do everything. You know, our heartbeat is beyond beneath our consciousness now. We've mastered that. We don't have to control that anymore. It's on autopilot. The things we don't master very much now is thoughts and intuition. That's what we're in the process of mastering. Emotions, definitely. But you can reach a stage where the emotions and the thoughts also become uh, homogenized or on autopilot on con beneath consciousness and greater aspects of life open up. And at some point you reach the stage of God, the father, and you be, you realize that you are a God. That's a very different take than Leo's interpretation, because it means that each individual person you meet is a God. It means that all of us being gods in the process of remembering that we are gods. It means that this is all a play. It's a stage. And that everyone's imperfections, everyone's character, everyone's knickknacks and personalities and politics, these are all parts that we're playing to communicate that To communicate what you need in the world to integrate with everything. So, for instance, if I am an angry person all the time, or I'm grumpy all the time, I'm communicating to the world that something's bothering me. And what you find is that the thing that's bothering you is the very thing that bothers you about yourself. It's something that, it's a need that's going unfulfilled. It's a problem that has not integrated with every other individual. Now, as individuals integrate together and civilize, you know, you've seen evolution has continued. It has progressed from animals to cultures, to tribes, to nations, to technology, everything, and our culture right now, and our ideas. All those things are the process of individuals integrating with other individuals. No longer are we, you know, tribes of people going around. I mean, on a grand scale, we actually are. But we're not like barbarians going around killing each other anymore uh, in most parts of the world. Um, We've progressed and we've found out more about the universe, made laws around it, constructed social norms around it so that we can all coexist together. So then the progress and the process of that is that you and me are not going to achieve enlightenment on our own. It includes all people. We all need to integrate together into one community. 
and that would be the kingdom of God. So it's not about realizing that you are everything and nothing matters. It's about integrating yourself and becoming more aware of what causes problems, of what people need, of what each individual needs to perfectly harmonize together with every other individual and be productive and creative. That's a greater vision than what Leo provides. And I invite discussion on it. So please comment in the comment section. I'm Jay Hendricks with Powerful Thought Daily. Um, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching.